We got the Mekons, punk rockers. <laughs> Those punks are rude. The Mekons, to last as long as they have and still embody the ideals that they started with in 1977, there's no other band like them. I would never, ever have imagined that 30 years later I would be talking about the Mekons and they would still exist. I don't think there's ever been a rock and roll band who's still making possibly their best records. How could they do that after 30 years? It's astounding. <laughs> We found The Clash's White Riot very offensive. I want to riot for us poor, downtrodden white people. So we wrote a song that was actually about, no, I've not been in a riot. In fact, the police scared the living shit out of me. We were a bunch of art students when we fought. We weren't musicians, and it was an art project, basically. It was an experiment. They've always encountered horrendous obstacles doing what they wanted to do. It's the curse of the Mekon. You haven't got a record label, and you haven't got any money. But that is the end of the story, usually, but we just wouldn't lay down and be dead. Is it loud? If it's too loud, you're too young. I'm too old. Where's my pacemaker? <laughs> The Mekons inspire a particular sort of devotion. These bunch of drunken limeys, they inadvertently screw it all up and come up with something completely new and vital and amazing. <laughs> We didn't really split up, so we thought we'd just keep going to you know, have our revenge on the world. They still play as if they are discovering their music. Talk about capturing the punk ethos. Yeah.